What is the best decade of football? Which era was the most talented? These are questions football fans have been asking forever. The only way to determine this is to take the best players from each decade, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s, and put them on the field in a tournament to determine the greatest NFL era. This is the NFL All-Decade Tournament. In the last game of the round robin, the 2000s take on the 80s. It's Joe Montana versus Tom Brady. Previously on the All-Decade Tournament. The 2000s had their best performance yet versus the 70s. Their defense was on fire, causing turnovers and forcing bad plays, while on offense, Tom Brady was going to work with his efficiency at an all-time high. The 2000s looked to gain momentum in this game. The 80s won off a Montana clutch fourth quarter. With a couple scores to go up against the 90s, Art Monk was a big reason why. The game many of you have been waiting for. It's Brady vs. Montana. It's Rice vs. Moss. It's Lewis vs. LT. 2000s vs. 80s coming right up on the All-Decade Tournament. The first drive of the game for the 2000s doesn't go as planned as the Minister of Defense puts the heat on Brady, but he has nowhere to go taking the sack. After the 2000s punt the ball away, Montana attacks that secondary, hooking up with Art Monk, a big producer in this tournament, for a big gain across the field. Not long after that, Joe dumps the rock off to Walter Payton, who takes it for the first down, setting up an explosive run by Eric Dickerson, who runs for the first touchdown of the game. Later in the first, Brady throws a strike to T.O. for a first down, the Niners D quickly responds to that play with a sack on Tom, forcing a long third down attempt. This first down is converted through a Tom Brady hookup with Randy Moss for a long bomb down the right sideline. The play after, Marvin Harrison just destroys his man coverage, cutting inside and walking into the end zone for an easy score. Brady sending a message to Montana that he isn't going away that easy. Rice replies to Moss with a catch in traffic with bodies flying everywhere, breaking a tackle and gaining a chunk of yardage. Rice puts his fellow receiver Steve Largent in position to take a curl to the house. The cornerback bites too hard on the route and the Seahawk great makes him pay. With the ball at midfield, Brady hits T.O. with another drive starter, gaining 20-ish yards. The 2000s grab a field goal off that drive. The first turnover is caused by the 2000s defense stripping the ball from Montana. Luckily enough for him, he is in the right position at the right time as his teammates bail him out, but that will be the end of the first half. After halftime, Brady carves up the D down the middle of the field once again with another pass to Marvin Harrison. Follow that up with a perfectly placed pass to Moss for a touchdown in double coverage, and you have yourself the lead for Team 2000s. With the 80s offense stalling, Brady knows he must capitalize. He gets his tight ends involved in the passing game with one pass to Antonio Gates for a long gain down the right sideline. That play leads to an eventual field goal on the drive. Only one touchdown from the lead. Joe knows it's now or never. He throws a dart to Art Monk for a 30 yard gain, but then the 2000s shut it down. Troy Polamalu wasn't having any of that. He picks it off for in a deep attempt into the end zone. Troy Polamalu is taking that back for the 2000s. Brady picks on the Owens matchup in this drive. The first pass going to 81 for a gain, and then the next, a pass interference penalty, setting up another three points for Team 2000s. With less than two minutes left, Joe Cool puts up seven to Lofton, but it proves to be late for a comeback. The onside kick is unsuccessful and the 2000s hold on for the win. The 2000s take this one 23 to 21. 
Could we potentially see this matchup in the finals of the tournament? Stay tuned. But Brady takes this game against Montana.